So this was the question where we had done the equations. We apply the equations of motion that is V equals U plus AT and S equals UT plus 1 by 2 GT squared. Then V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So these are the three equations which we apply here in the gravitation also. Here we just saw that the value of the acceleration due to gravity G is plus 9 is 9.8 meter per second square. And we saw that for the upward motion, if you are going for any upward motion or if any body is thrown in the vertically upward, so for that case, acceleration is equal to minus of g and for the downward motion for downward motion we have acceleration equals to plus g so these are the values that we had seen in the last class we had seen a few questions also based on these equations of motion so is there anyone who is finding any problems in solving out the questions from these topics Anyone from this class? And Chavan Koshik, for your subjective exam, you did not submit your answers well. Okay. You had written them over there. So that's why uh, it was as it could not be assessed well. Right? So uh, oh, I wrote them in the I wrote them right. in the chat box kind of thing. Lee. Yeah, so you wrote you wrote that in the chat box, so it could not be corrected out. Corrected means uh, it was difficult for me to check it so i have even i have checked it and sent you you have scored your I have, you have got your scores i think uh where in the whatsapp sir no not in the whatsapp even uh over there only you got the score you can check out okay so here In the last class, we, uh, we just did uh, these questions. Question number 14, 15, 16. Sir, and here today, it says, uh, in feedback yeah. files, it says not yet evaluating. Okay, it says not yet evaluated. Okay, I will check it since it's uh, checking was quite difficult. Right? Okay, so you can just tell me my marks here. Okay. okay. So see here. Uh, Today we'll do this question number 17. Before that, is there anyone who is finding any problem in these questions? Questions of free fall. No problems. Okay, let's see this question. See this question. A stone is allowed. Okay. A stone is allowed to fall from the top of a tower 100 meter high. And at the same time, another stone is projected vertically upward from the ground with a velocity of 25 meter per second. Calculate when and where the two stones will meet. Okay. I would suggest everyone to read this question at least two times. Read this question for at least two times. Okay, so there are two stones. Okay, one stone is thrown vertically upward. This is thrown vertically upward with a speed of 25 meter per second. Okay. A stone is allowed to fall from the top of a tower. The other 
the other stone it is at the top of the tower so this stone it is at the top of the tower 100 meter high so it is at a height of 100 meter okay. 100 meter high and at the same time another stone is projected vertically upward from the ground with a velocity of 25 meter per second so you have to calculate when and where the two stones will meet so you are throwing one a stone upward and dropping one stone from a height. Okay. So if they are in the same line and in the same plane, so they will meet some, they will meet each other at a certain point. Suppose both of them, they meet over here at, okay. Suppose both the stones, the one from the top and the one to, from the bottom, they meet at this point. Let this be some height edge from the ground. Okay. Let from the ground uh, at a height of h meter, the two balls, they meet each other. Okay. Now, suppose the first ball travels a height h and it takes some time t. Now, we do not know that how much is the time taken by this stone. We don't know how much is the time taken, but we just, uh, we just know that yes, the stone has been thrown. Okay. So, the stone reaches the height h in time t and in that time, the stone which was uh, dropped from the tower, it also reaches that same point. Okay. So, what will be the distance traveled by this top stone? What would be the distance traveled by the top stone? Hundred meters. Not hundred meter. They both are meeting at a height h above the oh, ground. Okay, then hundred minus h. Okay, so the top stone it will travel a distance of hundred minus h, and bottom stone will travel a distance of h. Okay. Now, uh, what time? Suppose the bottom stone takes the time t to reach this point. So, how much will be the time taken? For the top stone to reach the same point. How much time we can take? Will both the time be same or different? Since both the stones they are dropped at the same time. This one is dropped and this one is thrown. So both the activities they are done at the same time. So, the time will be different because the acceleration is different. Okay, just imagine the situation physically now. Imagine it physically. Okay, you are throwing this ball upward and someone is th uh, dropping the ball from the top. Right? So, since both, suppose uh, suppose both of, both of you, this is thrown at a time, let's say t equals to 9 minutes. Oh, sorry. Let's say uh, I start my stopwatch and over there, the timing starts from 0, 0, right? And here also, the timing starts from 0, 0. Okay. So, when it reaches over here, let us suppose the time is 0, 0, 2, 0. Suppose it takes just 20 seconds for this. Suppose for this bottom ball to reach this height where they meet each other. Okay, so what would be the time for this? The time would be same or different? Yes, time would be same or different? Would it be the same time or different time? Prince? Yes, sir. I guess different time. Should be different time. Okay. Think of the situation once more. This is the only problem. Think of it. The time will remain the same. Suppose uh, this uh, this ball was dropped at a time, say, 9 a.m. Suppose it was dropped at 9 a.m. Okay. 
and this ball was also thrown at 9 a.m., right? Understand it like this. Then, when the ball reaches over here, when the bottom ball reaches and meets this, suppose the time was 9.02 a.m. Suppose this was the time. When the bottom ball reaches the height h, where both of them meet together, suppose the time is 9.02. So, how much is the time taken for the bottom stone to reach this height? Abhina, how much is the time for Two the minutes, bottom sir, stone? Like... Sir, I think 9 to right. 2 minutes. Sir, so, sir yeah, I think it's the same. It's... Yeah, it's 2 minutes. And so, uh, at the same time, this has also reached over here. So, how much is the how much has the been time taken for this top stone? Two minutes. Two minutes. So the time will remain the same. Oh, I get it. Got it. Both yes, are sir. one is thrown upward, the other one is dropped downward. Both are repeating, meeting at a certain point. So the time is same. They are traveling for the same time. Okay. Uh, how did you calculate on, uh, when they both touch? Yeah, so for that we have two equations. Okay, now we will apply the equations. We have two cases. We have a ball which is being traveling from top to bottom. Right? And we have a ball which is traveling from bottom to top. Okay, so let's uh, understand it something like this. You have the two balls. This is for upward motion. Sir, I didn't so understand you... the last question. Can you repeat it? That last question is only going on. It has not been completed. We just decided over here that the time taken for both the stones will remain the same. As time is universal. Sir, are we taking gravity as a time for theater time? Yeah. So what are we taking gravity as? Gravity, we will take the value. We'll see. We are not up to that. We will take that gravity 9 .8. as 9.8. Okay. So see, for the upward motion, the ball was thrown with an initial velocity of 25 meter per second. And it travels a displacement of h. So displacement is h acceleration will be equals to minus g and time that it takes will be equal to t okay so we can use the second equation of motion as s equals ut plus half at squared we can use here s equals ut plus 1 by 2 at squared so substituting the value we get h equals u was 25 times t minus 1 by 2 g t squared. Okay. So this but is one we point. 9.8, right? Yeah, we will be using 9.8. But currently we are not putting the value. We will see and substitute it accordingly. Okay. We will put the value accordingly. Now for the downward motion, if we look for the downward motion, so during the downward motion, its initial velocity is zero as it has been dropped from a certain height. The displacement is covered. So what is the displacement, Abhinav? Sir. Yes, how much is the displacement? It will be same as the upward one. Right? So 100 meters. Check meter. it out. No, the bottom one has traveled a displacement of H. And the displacement of top one is? 100 meters. Oh, 100, 100, minus 100, minus 100 minus H. 100 minus H, right? 100 was the complete. So, displacement for this one is 100 minus h. We write here, displacement is 100 minus h. 
Okay. Then we know acceleration now will be positive. So we will put it as plus g. And time remains the same for both of them. So time we will substitute as t. So by putting the values, we get s equals ut plus 1 by 2 at squared. Okay. s is 100 minus h equals u that is initial velocity is 0 since it is dropped. Multiply t plus 1 over 2 g t squared. Yeah, uh, Neha. Fine. Neha, you can speak up at any time. During the class, you can unmute and ask your questions. Okay. So, see, uh, from here, we can put the value of H. We have already calculated the value of H here. We can put the value of H. We know the value of H is 25 into T minus 1 by 2 gt square. So here in place of h, we can write the same value. Are you getting everyone? Since there are two values, if you observe this equation, there are two variables. We have variable h and we have a variable t. So, so we will not be able h instead, the value of h instead of h. Yeah, instead of h, we put the value of h. Okay. So here in place of h, we just push 25t minus 1 by 2 gt square. So it will become 100 minus h is 25t minus 1 by 2 gt square equals 1 by 2 gt square. Now open up the bracket, it will become 100 minus 25t plus 1 by 2 gt squared equals 1 by 2 gt squared. Okay. So if you uh, solve this out, you will get 100 equals 25t. So time equals 4 seconds. So both the stones, they will meet each other after four seconds. Okay, so when will the both stones meet? After how much time will the stones meet? After four, four seconds. seconds. Four seconds. After four seconds. Now, can you tell where will they meet? Um, where will they meet? The thing you showed, right? Yeah, put the value of t and obtain the value of height. At what height do they meet? We already have an equation in terms of h here. We have h equals 25t minus 1 by 2 gt squared. We can put the values. There are, I think it will be like 86 or 87 around the gap. 80 meters from the top. So. How much? 80 meters? From the top. 80 meters from the top and 20 meters from the bottom. Okay. And that comes when you take the value of g as 10. Right, Neha? Oh, okay. sir, I took g yes, as 7.8. Okay, no issues. Even if you take g as 9.8, no issues. Oh, And I got 
How much? 92.2. Okay. So here, uh, all of you can uh, substitute the value and obtain the value of height. By using the value of GS10, you will be getting something, uh, the value of H, H to be 20 meter. So I hope everyone has got the answer. Okay, let's see the uh, next problem. And this problem, you should be able to solve it. Let's do this question. Okay, we have one more uh, thing. That's mass and weight. That's the last topic from this question. Let us start now with mass and weight. So I hope that everyone has understood with the questions of free fall. If anyone has any issue or any doubts, can ask them. So now we move towards mass and weight. See, the two quantities, mass and weight, we use them interchangeably. We understand mass and weight to be the same thing. When we say that, uh, we every day in our life, we say that my weight is 20 kilogram, my weight is 35 kilogram, or my weight is 60 kilogram, whatever we say. Okay. Or even here, we are calculating in physics, every time we are using that the weight of a car is the... Uh, we are saying that the mass of a car is uh, 2000 kilogram. Okay. So in everyday life, we are using the term weight. Okay. And the same has the meaning mass also. We are using that interchangeably. Up to now, we have understood them to be interchangeably, that both are the same. But these two terms, mass and weight, they are not the same. Here, mass refers to the content of matter. It refers to content of matter in an object. Content of matter in an object. This means the mass. The mass of an object means the content of matter. We measure the mass in kilograms. SI unit of mass is kilogram. Okay. Mass of any substance, that means how much of matter is contained in that. So whenever we say mass, mass means what is actually contained in that object. How much is the mass or matter contained in that object? That is the kilogram and we measure uh, that is mass and we measure that in kilogram. But when we say the weight of an object, we mean weight is a type of force. So by the weight, we mean the force with which force with which gravity pulls an object the force with which gravity pulls an object. So the force with which gravity pulls an object is called weight. That means if you have Chavan Kaushik, what happened? Nothing, sir. 
No, you are smiling too lot, so it's thought. Maybe I thought that you are looking at some joke. Hmm. Okay, see. So anyway, see here, the mass and weight. Weight means the force with which gravity pulls an object. As we know, suppose uh, we consider the center of the earth. So any object which is lying on the surface of the earth, it gets attracted towards the surface. It attracts, it is attracted towards the center of the earth. Okay. Or earth pulls that object with the force of gravity. And just now we saw in the previous section that the force of gravity can be measured in two ways. We can measure the force of gravity either by using the formula G M M by R squared or we can measure the force of gravity as F equals to mass times acceleration. Right? We can either measure it as a mass into acceleration or So we can either, either measure it as mass into acceleration or we can measure it as g into m into m upon r squared. Either of them can be measured. So here we can measure the most suitable or the most simple one is measuring the force of gravity by the formula force equals mass into acceleration. Okay. So here we can measure it like this. The mass of an object will be measured in kilogram and acceleration we know as 9.8. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. So therefore, force with which gravity pulls, that is the weight and it is equal to m into g. This is the same weight, which is equal to mg. So weight is a type of force. Weight is not, weight is not, it's mass. Well, like we are saying that I am 35 kilogram. So that saying or those words, they are incorrect. My weight is not 35 kilogram. I can say that my weight is 35 kilogram force. That will be correct, but I cannot say that my weight is 35 kilogram. As it means that my mass is 35 kilogram. Weight is different. Weight means the force with which gravity pulls an object. Since weight is a type of force, Right, weight is force, so therefore weight will be measured in Newton. The weight of the object, it will be measured in Newton. Sir, but mass okay. is constant, right? Yeah, mass is constant. Mass is constant. It does not change. Okay. What I mean by constant is that, suppose you buy one kilogram gold. Okay, if you buy one kilogram gold and you go weigh that one kilogram gold on the moon, so still it will remain one kilogram. Its quantity will not change. Do you think the quantity of gold will change? Quantity. Will the quantity of quantity of gold will change? Sir, can you repeat the question? Like quantity of the gold change? Huh? Suppose if you have here one kilogram gold, right? If you yes, have sir. a one kilogram gold on the surface of earth, you take that gold to moon. Over there, will it remain one kilogram or will it will it be its different? weight changes, right? It weight changes to mass one. Mass is constant, so it won't change. I'm not saying mass. I'm not saying weight. I'm just saying I have one kilogram of gold. So will it remain one kilogram or will it change? It will remain one kilogram, sir. It will remain one kilogram. Since the content of matter will not change. Okay. Now see the difference. Now there you will understand the difference between mass and weight exactly. We have seen two types of balances in our everyday life. Everyone has seen a balance of this type, which is generally used by uh, the people in the vegetable market. Physical this such a balance is called as a beam balance, right? Have you seen such a balance? Yes. Okay. So such a balance, this is a beam balance and it is based on the principle of uh, balancing. That whether both the sides of the 
if both the side masses are same so the so it will balance okay so this is a beam balance which is used in our everyday life then nowadays we are also using uh, electronic weighing machine right So let's suppose if you have an electronic weighing machine. Since everything is electronic, so we have electronic electronic weighing machines also. Now, okay, on the surface of earth, I measure here one kilogram on this, one kilogram on the pan balance. I measure the same one kilogram over here on the weighing machine. Okay, so both will be the same. Yeah, both will remain yes, the same. Sir. Okay. Now, what will happen? Now, if I take both these balances to move, okay, I'm carrying both these balances. I'm carrying my uh, beam balance also. I'm carrying my this electronic balance also <coughs> on the surface of moon. So, uh, which one will still show one kilogram and which one will show a difference? Will there be any difference or both of them will show one kilogram? The mass will remain same. Yeah, I, I think the mass. electronic one remains the same. So. Okay. So I think the beam balance might remain same. Beam balance might remain same. And this one show a difference? Electronic one will show a difference? Yes, yes. yes. Because the gravity is less, it will be less than 1 kg. Yes. So this beam balance, it will remain same on the moon also. It will remain same on the earth also. But the value on the pan balance will change. The pan balance will not show you the same mass. It will not show you the same weight as it was showing on the surface of the earth. And suppose you put anything over here of one kilogram. If you put anything over here of one kilogram, so it works on the principle that the gravity is attracting it downward. Gravity is applying a force that is equal to mg, which is measured by this electronic balance. This electronic balance, it is not actually measuring the mass. It is measuring the weight. Right? And this balance, it is measuring the mass. As the effect of gravity, it gets cancelled from both the pans. Since both the pans, they are subjected to the same gravitational force. Okay. Hence, Therefore, this pan balance will show the same uh, same quantity everywhere, but this electronic balance, it will show a difference. Okay. So, understood this? Sir, like, can, yes. uh, can weight be zero? Yeah. Sir, I'll be right now. See, the value of weight we just discussed that weight is equal to the force with which gravity pulls an object, right? And this value is equal to m times g. Okay. Since mass will not change, but the acceleration due to gravity, this g value or acceleration due to gravity, it's not a constant. It depends on certain factors. It depends on the mass of the planet. It depends on the distance edge. If you refer to the last section, so acceleration due to gravity, it is given by the formula gm over r squared. Okay. Now, if r is different, if the height is increased, so r will increase and hence the value of acceleration due to gravity will change. So, just we discussed and even in this example, we were discussing that mass remains the same, but weight can change. Why the weight changes? It is because of the changing acceleration due to gravity. Since acceleration due to gravity is also not a constant. Therefore, the weight of an object will, ch will change. No, sir. I was like asking if it could be zero anyway. Okay. If you have acceleration due to gravity equal to zero. If in any situation you are ex experiencing zero acceleration due to gravity, so your weight will be zero. Okay. okay. And let us see some of the situations of weightlessness. Okay. Situations of weightlessness. You can experience weightlessness.
weightlessness. What are the situations of weightlessness? So either if you have a free fall, if you have a free fall, if you are falling freely, so your weight will be zero. Under the situation of a free fall, you will have zero weight. Also, in the space. Oh, sir, like... Okay, see. Suppose. Uh, yeah, this under is the gravitation. Pan. Yeah. Okay, suppose you, are, uh, you sit on this pen, uh, on this electronic balance. Right? Yes. You sit on this electronic balance. Yes, it shows your weight. Suppose it shows your weight, whatever your weight is, it is showing. Now, if you jump off, suppose from a certain height or from an aeroplane, you jump with an electronic balance along with you. Okay, it being sitting on the electronic balance and this electronic balance is thrown outside. So, when you are thrown outside along with the electronic balance, the electronic balance will not show any weight. During that time, it will show your weight to be zero. It will show zero weight. Why, sir? But like we are, we are falling due to the gravity, right? So we must have some. If you are falling due to gravity, so the uh, scale is also fall falling due to gravity, and there is no surface from which you can get the reaction back. If you get any reaction, so then only you are experiencing. Then you are on. Then only you are having some weight. Okay. So understood okay. the concept, everyone. So during the free fall, your weight will be zero or in the outer space. If you move into the outer space, over there, your acceleration due to gravity is zero. The value of G is zero. Hence, there will not be any weight. You will experience weightlessness. You can also experience weightlessness when swimming. So, if you are swimming, your weight is zero. Sir, while swimming, it's our weight which decreases, right? Not zero, is it? It decreases, but if your weight is not zero, then you will not be able to swim. You will go down the water. Okay? Yes, sir. If your weight is not zero, so you will go down water. So, but why? Why weight become zero? Your weight can't become zero if you go into water. If you are swimming, okay, okay. Just understand it something like this. Suppose uh, uh, the, uh, let this be your swimming pool. Okay, so this is a small swimming pool in which you are going to swim. And suppose you have uh, someone first weighs you in the air, suppose uh, this is you, and you are being weighed by a spring balance, right? You have been attached with a spring balance like this. This spring balance measures that you are 60 kilogram. You have a 60 kilogram force. Right? So you have a 60 kilogram force and hence the weight is hanging in the downward direction. So the spring balance shows 60 kilograms. Now, if you are put along with the spring balance, you are put over here in the swimming pool. And you are swimming. Suppose you are here, you are swimming now. So will the spring balance show any weight? Will the spring balance show you any reading of any weight? No, the spring balance will not show you any weight. Okay, leave your example. Just take a take an example of a wooden block. Okay, take a wooden block, weigh it in air, and if you take that wooden block into the water and weigh over there being in water, when it is suspended in water, so due to up thrust of water, due to upward force of water, it will not experience any weight. So during swimming, we experience weightlessness. In the outer space, we can experience weightlessness. Or during the free fall also, we can experience weightlessness. Okay. Then any doubts? Any other doubts? No. 
Okay, let's list uh, let's list out the differences between mass and weight. So here we are going to list out the differences. Whatever differences you know, you should tell. Okay. So Can I okay. tell? Yes. Sir, uh, mass is mm -hmm. um, a scalar quantity and weight is vector. Okay, very good. Mass mm. is a scalar quantity. Sir, mass is, a, is the amount of uh, uh, atoms in a object. Okay. Mass is amount of matter. The mass cannot change uh, while weight can vary. Okay. SI unit of mass is kilograms while SI unit of uh, weight is newtons. Okay, mass is constant. SI unit. Okay. SI unit is kilogram. Okay. And any other doubt? Mass cannot be zero. Okay, mass cannot be zero. Fine. It also remains constant. Let's see. Mass can never be zero. Any other difference? Yeah, any other difference? No differences? So it does not depend on acceleration due to gravity. Okay, we can write that it does not depend on acceleration due to gravity. And here for the weight, we can write that weight is a vector quantity. Okay, weight is a vector quantity and what? how do we define weight? It is mass in acceleration. Okay, weight is the force. By which body is attracted towards the earth. Okay. Force with which the so weight is the force with which gravity pulls an object, and weight is not a constant. It changes with and SI unit. What are, what is the SI unit of Newton. Newton? Newton. 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 Okay. Its SI unit is Newton. Fine. And can it be zero? Yes. yes. It yes. can be zero. So can we also write that mass is measured by a common balance while weight is measured by a spring balance? Okay, we can say that weight weight is measured by spring balance. We can say that mass is measured by a, a pan balance or a beam balance. We do not call it common balance. We can either call it beam balance or spring balance. Or beam balance or pan balance. So can we write the formula, sir? Uh, formula. Okay, so we write here formula also. Weight is not constant. And let's write the formula. Weight is the force with which gravity pulls an object. And here we can write that weight is equal to mg. Right? This is the formula. <coughs> okay, can anyone tell me what do we mean? If I say that weight of an object is, let's say, if I write weight of an object, what do you mean by this? Weight of an object is 
फोर्टी किलोग्राम फोर्स वट डू मीन बाई दिस वेन आई से दैट वेट ऑफ एन ऑब्जेक्ट इज थर्टी फोर्टी किलोग्राम फोर्स Is it mass or is it weight? Sir, it is ah. weight. It is weight. weight. So, uh, in Newton also, will it remain the same? No, sir. No. No. Because then forty kgs will be converted into. No, like Newton. multiplied into. Yeah. The g, right? So if you if you want to convert it to newton, this forty kilogram will be multiplied with nine point eight. Okay. So what it means here? It means weight is equal to forty into nine point eight. Yes. If we want to calculate the mass, then we have to divide, right? Yeah. For which? For this one. Yes, yeah, so if we want to find the mass, we have to divide the weight. No, right? if no, if you uh, if you want to calculate the mass from this, it's given that weight of an object is forty kilogram force. So it means the mass is forty kilogram, okay, and the weight will be forty into nine point eight. Sir, but then I like you know. Weight is equals to mg, while f is also is is like m into a, right? So the formula is the same for both of them. So yeah, the formula is same. Isn't weight supposed to be equal to force then? Yeah, so that is what we are saying. That is what is the definition of force. So weight is the force. See, weight is the force. So then why right? is multiplying it by nine point eight then? Why? Because here the acceleration due to gravity is fixed. Okay, acceleration is fixed. We know that the value of acceleration will be nine point eight. When gravity pulls any object, so the value of acceleration will be nine point eight. So, but then when we are writing a weight of an object, isn't it already multiplied by um, like you know into like nine point eight? Then if you if, if, if we write yeah, the unit as nine point eight. Right? That is, if you are writing the unit as Newton, that means it is multiplied by 9.8. Okay. And if you are writing it as kilogram force or gram force, so that is not multiplied. Then you have to multiply it and convert. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just let's see a few questions now. After this, your chapter will be over. Sir, what about thrust and pressure? Uh, thrust, and principle? thrust, pressure, Archimedes principle, they are not in your syllabus. So we, have who... this we have it, sir. Okay, you have that. So fine, uh, let's compute that also. So in the next class, we will be starting with that buoyancy and pressure. Okay, so in the next class, we will do that. And in your exam, in your test, uh, which will be on this Sunday, you will have only gravitation. No pressure and no thrust. So thrust and pressure will not be there in your uh, this exam on Sunday. Let's do this question. Okay, let's see other question. These two questions. <coughs> Example 10.5. Okay, let's see example 10.5. An object weighs 10 Newton when measured on the surface of the earth. What would be its weight when measured on the surface of the moon? What would be its weight when measured on the surface of moon? Uh, it would be one sixth, uh, one sixth of weight on the earth. How much? 
Okay, an object weighs ten newton on the measured on the surface of Earth. Its weight would be on the Moon is one over six of ten. That one point six. So this is a straight away answer. You uh, for this you should just know the value of the acceleration due to gravity on Moon, right? And the value of the acceleration due to gravity on Moon is one over six of the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. So G on Moon equals to 1 over 6 of g on earth. So therefore weight on moon weight on moon will be equal to 1 by 6 of weight on earth. So this will be equal to 1 by 6 multiplied 10 which is 1.6 newton. So don't we have to convert it into kgs? We can just so what's the value so, what's the value of G on moon? So, uh, multiply 9.8 by 1.6. Multiply this 9.8 by 1.6. Sorry, 1 by 6. You will be getting that value of G on moon. So, don't we have to convert this 1.6 newtons into kg? You can just leave it like that. Is it fine? Yeah, it, we have to leave it like this only. This is newton. Okay, sir. Okay, so up to here you will have your questions. Prepare your for your exam. Good night, everyone. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye. 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 Bye.